fantasy films like King Kong, Harryhausen's classics, and movies through the 80s combined stop motion with live action to achieve their visual effects until CG became the better option. But the technique continued to be an entertaining option, and with the right tools, we can have some fun with it too. We're having a disagreement, and have opted to settle our differences with violence. I've done a tutorial already on compositing stop motion over live action video, but this one will focus on actual interaction between a live and an animated character. First, shoot your live action plate. If shooting indoors, use the same lights you will use when animating. Take time to carefully plan the action and determine where to look when making eye contact with the other character. Practice the moves and shoot lots of takes so you have plenty of choices. Next, edit the plate, choosing the best take and trimming the beginning and end. For impacts, try cutting out a frame or two of the beginning of the hits so they feel stronger. Export a high-res version for compositing and a low-res version for reference. Both change to 24 frames per second. Now you can set up your shot with the action staged in front of a blue or green screen. I'm using a DSLR and Dragon Frame, and while you can shoot with Stop Motion Studio, as far as I can tell you can't import a background movie, so you may not be able to get precise lineups. Set up the lights angled as they were when you shot the plate, being careful not to get shadows on the green screen. In Dragon Frame, bring up the lineup video and line up your shot. You'll need to consider the placement in frame, scale, and eye contact, then prepare your exposure sheets. Find the contact frame and mark it first, then work backwards to work out the swing and anticipation, and forward to work out the follow-through. As you animate, always pay attention to eye contact. As you get close to the contact frame, do a draw over of the point of impact so you can animate towards it. Try your best to time out the action exactly, but if there is a hold in the anticipation, and you're off by a few frames, you can just add or subtract frames from the hold to get it to time out exactly. Here I'm taking frames out of the swing to make it more powerful and adjusting the length of the hold to make it still time out right. I'm compositing in After Effects, but if you know of a good free compositing app, please note it in the comments. Change the preference for sequence footage to 24 frames per second to match the plate, and import the frames. Use the plate to create a new timeline and add the frames above the plate. Scale the animation down to fit and it should line up with the plate. Create a mask around the animation to remove garbage and sections of the green screen you don't need. Then use key light to remove the green screen, making adjustments as needed to clean up the composite. I like to feather the edges just a bit to smooth it out. Now use filters to make the animated character look like it's really in the live action setting. In Lumetri Color, adjust exposure and light settings to match, as well as saturation. It's often good to add just a bit of camera lens blur to match the quality of the plate. To add motion blur, you first need to make a pre-comp, otherwise the blur filter will override the other filters. Adjust the settings of the motion blur to match the blur in the video. Finally, if your plate is grainy, use match grain to get the same grain onto the animation. It looks off when the animation is clean while the plate has some grain. This demo has focused on a specific action with specific resources, so methods and results will vary based on what you have available but I hope this tutorial has given you some ideas for interactive effects in your next stop motion project. Thanks for watching.